We welcome everyone to this May 13th, 2024 meeting of the Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees. This is a board workshop and all items that will be discussed have been duly posted. While this is a meeting in public, it is not a meeting of the public. If you wish to speak, please register in the lobby and the audience for guest form and follow the information on the speaker form. The board's role is to set goals, approve personnel and budgets, make policy and provide oversight. We are not here to manage or solve individual problems. Management is the responsibility of the superintendent. As a board, we believe that we must educate every child, provide every child the greatest opportunity to learn, and maintain a safe and secure environment, mentally, physically, emotionally, and academically. These are our core values, and we appreciate your interest in the students of CISD. <clears throat> We're gonna deviate just a little the special night and we're going to go to audience for guests because we have several people that have signed up but I'm going to read the introduction to public comment because that is required of us so just bear with me okay <clears throat> the CISD Board of Trustees encourages comments about the district from citizens of the district from district employees or from members of the public Anyone wishing to speak may do so at this time. The board asks that each participant's comments pertain to public education and be no longer than three minutes per person. The board also respectfully requests that the speaker refrain from mentioning other students or parent and staff members' names when addressing their concern. Under the Texas Open Meetings Act, the board is not permitted to discuss or act upon any issues that are not posted on the agenda for tonight's meeting. This means that the board the board members are unable to deliberate, ask questions, provide you with a response, or take any actions relating to your comments. If an issue mentioned is listed on tonight's agenda, the board's deliberation of the issues will be deferred until the appropriate time during the meeting. <clears throat> In addition, the board has adopted complaint policies that are designed to secure at the lowest administrative level a prompt and equitable resolution of complaints and concerns. Complaints brought by employees, students, or parents may be brought in accordance with our local school board policy. Each of these processes provide that if a resolution cannot be achieved administratively, the person may appeal the administrative decision to the board as properly posted agenda item. Copies of our district policy on public participation in meetings and filing complaints can be found on our website. If you need assistance with these pol policies or processes, please call Merrill Harrison in the superintendent's office. All right. So first up is Ms. Patricia Daniels. Okay, Mr. Daniels, start the timer. You know, I'll, I'll go down the rabbit hole. I'm standing on behalf and want to recognize Barbara Kelly. And I know that if anybody knows Barbara is my bestie. I thought about writing something and I thought it's my bestie. You give and you give and you never expect anything in return. You are a light to your community. You are Mrs. Corsicana. You believe in passing the baton to other people. You believe in uplifting everybody else and you have a kind heart. We are grateful to you, Barbara, for all that you've done in Corsicana and all that you're going to do. Somebody said to me the other day, I can't believe Barbara's finished. And I said, you obviously don't know Barbara. Barbara's just getting started. We give thanks for you. I am grateful to call you my best friend. You are my sister, and I love you. Keep doing what you're doing. Keep walking your walk, and keep being a shining light for others, because you are just that. Thank you so much. Next, we have Ms. Donna Williams. We gonna get through this. <laughs> I am representing the family. I am the youngest of you know the girls, and Michelle. Oh, uh, y'all know it's Barbara, but we call it Shell. Uh, if y'all know her, she's very passionate. She she's very passionate towards her community, as she's re has shown over and over again. When she goes in, she go hard. 
especially for the children. And I, you know, I, I, I love you for that. You represented the family well. And you know, I, I'm just excited to see what you're gonna do on the next level. Cause it, you have a whole, just, I know you have an agenda. I, I, been, I know her better than anybody else. <laughs> and she has an agenda. So y'all look for great things. She's gonna, I mean, it's gonna be awesome. I'm excited. This is that middle mark, but it's actually the beginning. So you keep doing what you're doing. I love you and ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> Okay, next is Penny Liggins. I think I see a theme here. Good afternoon. Uh, Barbara, we go back from much earlier in life women with Miss Tressy Langston, and she was our 4-H leader. We also know that you took Mr. Turner's place and the legacy that he had left, and you had done a phenomenal job. You have nothing to ever hold your head down about because you're proud and we are proud of you. We love you for what you're doing, what you have done, and looking forward to what the new things will bring for you. So uh, my favorite scripture, and I hope you will go home and read it, is Joshua 24 and 15. It's for it's me and my house. We will serve the Lord. Continue to do so. <laughs> Deanna Hernandez. <laughs> How y'all doing? Um, I have been knowing Barbara, I'm going to say Barshell because her nephews and all, they call her Barshell, so I just mixed her name up. But I've been knowing her for 41 years, and it's been a, a, a pleasure knowing her in the church. We work together as teenagers, and she have never ceased to amaze me of how much energy, ha energy you have. I tell her all the time, girl, I just seen you so and so, so over here, and now you're back over here. I said, where you get the energy from? But she has represented well, and I am proud of you. I know that you have many plans to go on and do what the Lord tell you to do, and I'm behind you all the way. So push. You have filled your shoes, so push forward. Love you. Valerie Horn. Hello, everyone. I came to speak about a very uh, beautiful woman of God, and I love her. Class of 84 in the house. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go, baby. I'm sorry. That's just a, that's just a, sorry. That's just a, that's just a little, that's just where we came from. That's who we are. So here's my word for you, Miss Barbara Kelly. Phenomenal. Very remarkable. Extraordinary. And I would expand on that by saying, that you don't quit, that you are a pusher, and you are a puller. You are a person who has the ability to command the room and to make people understand that what we do, we do for a greater good. And I want to thank you for that. I want to thank you for your, for your perseverance. I want to thank you for your knowledge, your wisdom, your understanding. And I want to thank you for a heart that is a servant's heart. And that's what's so amazing about you. Um, we, we were going through some things, and she and I were going back and forth. I remember we were in school. She'd be in, and I'd be out. She'd be in. When you're going back, when you're going back, always encouraging, always supportive, always collaborative, a great communicator. And I appreciate that. So I'm saying all these words so you can remember them. Don't forget, because you're a phenomenal woman. That's you. Trina Green. That's me. <laughs> um, I'm standing to show appreciation to Miss Kelly. Uh, as one of the younger ladies, I've always told her that she is a tremendous role model. I always look up to her. Uh, you know, sometimes people will watch you, you don't even know they're watching you. So I've watched her many years. She has, I just stand as first as a resident of Corsicana, 
as a staff member of CISD, but mostly as a, your sister in Christ, to let you know that I love you. I thank you. I think I texted you last week and told you. I actually texted her. I told her, you are a beacon of light for our community. Uh, and it shows everywhere she goes. And, and I just love her. I thank you for always thinking of others. I thank you for always putting others before yourself. I thank you for always encouraging me and others. And I also mostly thank you for supporting. You support when you don't have to. And I know everything that I've had in our ministry or anything that I've had going on in school, I look up. If I don't see nobody else, I'm going to see Miss Kelly. So I just want to say I thank you, thank you, thank you. And, you know, my mom and the elders say, you know, you give people their flowers while they're alive so they can smell them. So I want to present to you tonight some flowers to say that I love you and a little card to just let you know that you are appreciated. Ms. Harrison, is there any more? <laughs> so that brings us into item number two, recognizing and honoring Ms. Kelly for 15 years of dedicated service to CISD. <laughs> Have a little something for you, so come on up. Ms. Kelly has always supported me as a mom, as a, a woman, a parent, an educator. We are thankful for you for the last 15 years. You always put our kids first, our, our staff, you always encouraged us. Um, thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you. <laughs> You're good. You're good. I was expecting you to say something. All right. When I signed, when I uh, went to Mr. Turner um, 15 years ago to tell him that I wanted to um, get his spot, um, first of all, he said we need to wait because I'm, they're going to be on. You know, I want to go ahead and continue another term. So I waited, and then when he decided not to run, I went ahead and decided to sign up to run. And I did it because, like, like most people have said, I, I love my community. I've always served my community. And I just felt like this was the next level for me. Because I love the kids. I love, you know, my, my passion for our community to make it better, you know. And so that's why I signed up. I signed up for that purpose. And I hope whoever, I know I've talked to Christopher and I've talked to Melissa, and, and I poured into them why I ran. And I, in my, in my hope is that they continue on the journey, you know, that, that I'm leaving, you know, Christopher is in my place. And so I know that, he, like I gave him the baton earlier and I said, you know, it's y'all turn now. You know, somebody passed the baton to me, so I had to pass the baton to Christopher and Melissa. And so I know this team right here, y'all will be a team of eight. We have a new leader, Stephanie, and it's all about the future, you know, our kids. We have kids that are all about tech. I'll talk to Kelly and Stephanie. We have technology kids now. You know, and we got to make it better for them. And so y'all get on board with this new team, the team of eight. And I know that our staff, y'all get on board with them and make it better for the next generation. Because like I told them, I want to make sure we have the right kids and kids that learn and so they can take care of me when I go to the nursing home. <laughs> 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 but thank y'all for everything. <laughs> Let's 
so somebody sitting to my left told me, I heard her say this one time. You're look, find a window. I can't see. If you can't see me, I can't see you. Okay. All right, Barbara, just a little bit. There you go. Perfect. All right. Everybody ready? One, two, three. A couple more. All right. Perfect. I didn't get to say my goodbyes, Barbara, earlier, but uh, since thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. Thank you. All right. We've done that. Done that. Are we, we're skipping the superintendent's report. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. Now we're going to get here for some other fun, and that's the canvassing of the election results. Right. So. The election results show that in, for trustee place three, 1,351 votes were cast in, for that place. Chris Meekins got 757 votes. Balin Russ got 406. And Carr Stewart got 188. So congratulations, Mr. Meekins. In place four, Miss Branch had a tough race, uncontested, <laughs> and she got all 1,216 votes. Congratulations. <laughs> and for place six, we had 1,385 votes, and Melissa Castillo received 768, to Doug Woolsey 617. So congratulations, Melissa Castillo. <laughs> Seth Brown, President of the Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees, sitting on the canvassing board to canvass the general election of May 4th, 2024, on May 13th, 2024, in Corsicana, Texas, I certify that the figures on the tally sheets correspond with the figures on the returns. Witness my hand on May 13th, 2024. What's that? Oh, me? Oh. Yeah, make your last motion. I move that we certify and confirm that the figures on the tally sheets correspond with the figures on the return. Is there a second. second? We have a motion and a second that we certify and confirm that the figures on the tally sheets correspond with the figures on the returns. All those in favor say aye. 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 All those opposed say no. The ayes have it, and we've certified the election. to the Administrative Oath of Office. Ms. Harrison. faithfully execute the duties of the office of Corsicana ISD Board of Trustees of the state of Texas <laughs> and will to the best of my ability preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution and laws of the United States 
and of this state. So help me God. Thank you. You can sign it and I'll get it after the meeting. Had an event, a fun event, fun field evening. Um, we're going to go into closed session briefly, as permitted by Texas Governance Code Section 551.01. Okay. Do we have any discussion? Or any not motions and nominations? Can I make a closed session? I make a motion that we name um, Jamie Roman president, Kathy Branch vice president, and Brad Fulmer secretary. We have a motion. Is there a second? I make a second. We have a motion and a second to make Jamie Roman president, Kathy Branch vice president and Brad Farmer, Secretary. All those in favor, say aye. aye. All those opposed, say no. The ayes have it. And Jamie Roman is now the president, Kathy Branch is the vice president, and Brad Farmer remains the secretary. All right, now we're gonna play musical chairs. Next on the agenda is the presentation of summer school plans. Good evening, Ms. Howell and Ms. Roman and members of the board. I wanted to give you guys a quick update on about summer school and then also our summer camp that we're having. Uh, summer school will be in June from 8 to 3.30 at the elementary in Navarro. Um, and then the intermediate will be at the intermediate school and because of the units being replaced at the high school we will have high school summer school at the middle school along with the other middle school kiddos um, the we will the students all students will benefit from the summer lunch program and then in June we will also have the 24th to the 27th ESC testing at the middle school as well um, for summer camp we are excited to partner with the National Inventors Hall of Fame, and that will be in July. So this is actually a STEM camp 
that students are going to get to uh, participate in. It's hands-on engaging and we also have scholarships available for students. Um, any students that's reached out to us, we've been making scholarships available to those. This is for incoming first through sixth graders um, and so we're, we're excited about having the opportunity for students. Thank you. Thank you. Next on the agenda is a teacher incentive allotment spending plan. Ms. Howell, Ms. Roman, board members, thank you. Uh, I'm here to talk to you about the spending plan for the teacher incentive allotment. Uh, the biggest part is the money going to the teachers, so over $520,000 going to teachers uh, it is going to go out probably the definitely the first week of June so it's not on their teacher certificate yet and it's it will be around May 21st May 22nd and we want all that on paper before the money goes out uh, but it's pretty much a, a sure deal so uh, one of the requirements is that the money has to be all spent by August 31st we retained 10% uh, of that 520000 for administrative costs. So I'm here to present that and uh, answer any questions. So that 10% is $52,197. Uh, 52, so uh, we have a portion of it going to precision exams. Precision is a third party vendor that makes pre and post tests. This is a necessary part of the TIA program. It's how we measure student growth. And a lot of our teachers that are now a part of it since we expanded it so much. So we're not just doing core, we're opening it up to electives, including fine arts, CTE, and those classes now have to have pre and post tests. Uh, core classes have MAP testing or STAR. Um, Precision is a main vendor for CTE classes. So next we have NWEA MAP. Okay, so we're gonna help contribute uh, to the cost of that as well. So understand too that this money that we're getting is not part of our normal revenue. So it's not anything additional to the budget. This is new money that TEA has uh, set aside. Okay, so that'll help pay for MAP, save the district $12,000 as well. Third piece, some of our courses, there are no third party vendors uh, or none that are reliable or that TIA staff will approve. So one of the options is we can do in-house. We can do an in-district made pre and post test. And we plan on starting to make those in the summer. Well, teachers are off contract, and with this money, we are allowed to uh, pay them, compensate them for coming up on a day off uh, or not part of their contract. So approximately, that's what we're going to spend. Um, if the precision, that precision number is a little high, uh, so it'll go into the map uh, to help supplant more of map. Um, but all this has to be done before August 31st. So all that money will go out. Uh, anything that, that is, we're under budget on, we'll just put it towards map testing and save the district uh, more money uh, that way. And that's it. Um, are there any questions about TIA or the TIA spending plan? I just want to clarify one thing. Sure. So um, the 10%, the 52,000 that we receive, that's not a number that we picked. That is what we were told. That percentage, 10% is the maximum amount that a district can take from the allotment of the, of the payout to teacher payout. So it is something, uh, it can be lower than 10, uh, but 10% is the highest. So, and that was a choice that was made in that very first application, carried over. Now that we know what this looks like and what, it's, what it is going to cost us, that's something we can adjust from here on out now that we know. And it is something that we can adjust 
even after our plan was submitted a couple weeks ago, and let's say they accept it, this time next year we can say we're not going to do the 10 percent, we'll do nine, you know, or something like that. You can change it on the spot. That's one of the things that they're flexible about. So, which it's teacher money. So if, if that's something we want to do, then then great. So. I also have a question to clarify. Um, the money has to be spent this summer. Is this for like uh, teachers that work during the summer with summer school and summer programs and the summer camps? This set of money will be directly focused on any teacher that we ask to help make a pre or post test for their subject and grade level. It won't be anything with summer school or the summer camps. Yeah. Yep. courses sure sure we tried to capture just about everything so you're talking fine arts K through 12 CTE 7 through 12 uh, PE uh, we expanded more into uh, special programs so we're looking at dyslexia therapists uh, life skills um, inclusion anyone that and all teachers do. So anyone that is somehow connected to instruction and the success of students, we try to include them, get them in there. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and so then they're, you know, for example, like the dyslexia therapists don't have a roster set in Skyward. They just, they're pull outs. So their pre and post test will be tied to the success of that student on STAR. Uh, they won't have to do anything within their class so uh, but yeah we're excited um, so and like I said if anyone asks that first week of June that's when that one lump sum will be given will be sent out to the teachers and I've already notified them of the timeline what to expect because they're gonna get an email from the commissioner congratulating them so they're they're all aware and they'll know that when they come back from Memorial Day or when we come back, we'll be putting this stuff into Skyward and we'll get it out to them that first week of June. So, yeah, I had just some comments from teachers that, I mean, they were, is it, is it one, is that really the number? Is that one lump sum I'm gonna get? And I said, that is exactly the number you, you can expect. Uh, very excited, so. Thank you. Thank you sir. Okay, next on the agenda is the athletic program report. Good evening, Superintendent Howell, Ms. Roman, members of the board. Thank you for having us tonight to give you an overview of Tiger Athletics for 23-24. It's been an outstanding uh, school year for the athletic department. The UIL allows opportunity for postseason participation in 19, 19 different activities. And I'm proud to say that um, we qualified for postseason participation in 14 of these 19 activities. Um, boys and girls cross country, had team and individual regional qualifiers, girls soccer by district finalists, girls and boys powerlifting, state qualifiers, and a state runner up. Boys golf were the district champions, regional qualifiers. Softball were by district finalists. Baseball, the district champion and by district champion. Boys and girls track, area, regional, and state qualifiers and team tennis and spring tennis, district champion regional qualifiers. So we're very proud of those coaches and kids. Um, here's an overview of middle school participation. Um, our, our participation remains strong across the various sports at the middle school and high school levels.
we're right on track of where we've been. Um, I'm going to highlight the individual programs and some of the superlatives. Tiger Cross Country, uh, individual regional qualifiers um, listed there. Very proud this year, the team qualified or finished third place in the district and advanced to the regional competition as a team. Football, two and eight. Coach Rogers is in the uh, midst of off season right now. The coaches and kids are working extremely hard in preparation for the 24 season. And we look forward to all the new exciting things to come uh, under new leadership in our football program. Here are a few of the superlatives from this season's football team. Moving on to volleyball, we had a 14 and 14 record, which was an improvement from the year before. Uh, first team all district was Erica Rufton, who was an underclassman. We look forward to exciting things to come uh, from her. Tiger basketball finished with a record of 14 and 20, which was an improvement as well. First team all district, Jerron Betts and LJ Williams. The Lady Tigers finished 16 and 18 under Coach Nick Claiborne. Uh, first team honors to Nevaeh Thomas. Our girls soccer team were by district finalists this year. Um, Maya Jasso was attacking mid midfielder of the year, and Sahara Gibson was, a, was named a Region 2 All-Star. So we're proud of her. She'll be participating in the uh, All-Star game. So kudos to Coach Procell and Sahara Gibson. Boys soccer finished with a record of 11, 8, and 1. They actually finished tied for fourth place in the district. Uh, unfortunately, we lost out on a tiebreaker, so we uh, narrowly missed advancing to the bi-district round, but we're excited about uh, next year. Um, Andre Abanez was attacking midfielder of the year. Um, Hector Bautista, Aaron Briones, and Santiago Centino were uh, first team all district. Powerlifting, we had two state runner-ups, silver medalists, Lakias Kelly and Evan Owen. Golf, under Coach Andy Dotson, were the boys' district champion and regional qualifier. We had a team of six that were mixed and matched through the year to, to comprise uh, the team that advanced to the regionals. Softball, we were by district finalists. First team, Ava Rodriguez and Mariana Garcia. Baseball, we were the district champions, by district champions. Finished the season ranked number six in the state, according to the Texas High School Baseball Coaches Association. Finished with a record of 26 and six. Superlatives, congratulations Coach Autry. Heath Autry, Coach of the Year for the district. Adrian, Adrian Baston, Defensive Player of the Year. Connor Perkins, Pitcher of the Year. Easton Autry, Offensive Player of the Year. First Team All-District, Brody Dobbs, Josh Portillo, and Trenton Bruton. Track and field, outstanding season. We were the finished uh, sixth place in Region 2. We finished in 11th place at the state meet. Um, Jashawn Lloyd. Junior was a district champion in the 110 hurdles and 300 hurdles. He was the area champion. He was the regional champion in the 110 high hurdles. He was state runner-up silver medalist in the 110 high hurdles and 300 hurdles. In addition to that, we sent a uh, four by 400 meter relay team to the state meet. They were the regional runner-up. They were state qualifiers, Keelan Haynes, Tyshawn Lloyd, Andre Abanez, and Jashawn Lloyd. These are other kids that qualified for the area and regionals. Team tennis, we're the district champion. We're the regional semifinalists. We advanced to the postseason in team tennis for the 39th year in a row 
under uh, Coach Chad White. Our end of season ranking was 15th. In Texas, our overall record was 19 and three. Spring tennis. Coach White said this is the first time this happened uh, that he could remember here in Corsicana. We were the district champions in all five events at the spring tennis tournament. Boys singles, girls singles, boys doubles, girls doubles, and mixed doubles. Kate Higgs, district singles champion, she finished third at the regional tournament last week, which makes her a state alternate. Uh, Will Higgs was a district boys champion, regional quarterfinalist. Ashley Bouchon, district doubles champion, regional semifinalist. Uh, Finley Williams, district doubles champion, regional semifinalist. John Higgs was district doubles champion, regional semifinalist. Perez Rios, district doubles champion, regional semifinalist. Avery Williams, district mixed doubles champion, regional semifinalist. Isaac Owen was a district mixed doubles champion and regional semifinalist. Those were all your district champions and um, regional qualifiers. Outstanding season for them. And that is the overview of the 2023-24 uh, athletic season. Thank you. I have one question. I'm sorry. Um, you said uh, in soccer, Sahara, mm -hmm. she has she not played, or has she, is the game coming up? I don't believe it's happened yet. Okay, so it's coming. Do we? So we don't know a date or anything. I don't with that have yet. a date, but I can find that out. For you. Okay, that would be great. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to the board planning calendar review. So in your packet, you will find the board planning calendar. It's a draft uh, for the year beginning in August, moving into July of 2025. So um, if you've had a chance to look at this, I can make any changes that you would like. Anybody have any questions regarding the calendar for the next? And we'll have time. I mean, if we need to adjust dates, um, we're able to do that. So, Next is the annual shack report. Hello, Miss um, <clears throat> Howe, Miss Roman, school board members. My name is Carla Witt. I'm the health coordinator with Corsican ISD. I'm going to present our shack uh, annual shack report to you now. So just a little bit about SHAC. SHAC is required uh, by the state of Texas that we meet four times a year. Several of y'all board members have been on SHAC team with me. Uh, just to let y'all know, we use the whole school, whole community, um, whole child model. That is a model where the, ch the student is the center and everything we do is based around that. This year we focused SHAC on the health education of vape and fentanyl, basically because of House Bill 3908 went into effect when that is the Tucker's Law which is about education of opioid dangers. And so based on that Tucker's Law, next year, Red Ribbon Week, we'll be focusing on fentanyl training or fentanyl poisoning awareness. Uh, the education tools from TEA, CDC, and the Health Department will be our curriculum that we'll be looking at to be using next year. They have some really good um, curriculum that's evident-based, some uh, good videos from parents. And we just think some of these will be really powerful to our students to watch next week, next year during Red Ribbon Week. Uh, something else we did during our SHAC meetings, we had Impact Navarro County. They brought their hidden and plain sight trainer, trailer. And our parents got to go through and they were like, find it, find the drugs. Mm -hmm. And it was interesting to see where the drugs were hidden. And it was very eye-opening to our parents to like common household items, a uh, plug, maybe could be something hidden in that. 
a bottle of water. You think it's a normal water bottle? It's not, it's a false bottle. So we enjoyed them coming. We also had a guest speaker come from North Texas Behavior Health Agents uh, Authority. And then our last meeting was a round table discussion of vape and CISD guidelines. Part of my purpose for SHAC is just to educate our parents to what a great job we're doing and that what our guidelines are for that. So I do ask that SHAC, that I'm recommending that you approve the educational tools for Tucker's Law tonight. Um, that just gives us some flexibility to what we can use based on what the TEA and the health department are putting out for that. Uh, we'll move on. Something else that, uh, as a health coordinator, I get to oversee, and that is our adolescent development classes and video. Today was our first day for the eighth grader, for the eighth grader starting their Hope Center, and currently we are at 76% of the consents that have been turned in. Uh, we did sixth grade. Sixth grade has the Hope Center and the boy and the girl video, and you can see there 78% of the enrollment turned their consents in. And once we get those consents in, you'll see that a great number of parents want those, want their children to attend the Hope Center classes and the girls' video. Uh, for fifth grade, we just do the boy and girl video. And again, 76% of the enrollment turned it in, and 95 and 92% of the parents opted in for their students to watch those videos. For fourth grade, uh, we just have a very simple, remember we made that video, very simple video describing adolescent development. And you can see here the percentage of consents that were, that were turned in, and then also the number that opted in, and the student for the girls and the boys. Uh, so once we get those consents turned in, parents are really wanting their kids to be educated about that. Uh, just some information now about health services. Um, Senate Bill 629 said that Narcan had to be on every campus, 7th through 12th grade. We, last year we had decided that Narcan was going to be on every campus. Uh, so every nurse has Narcan, every nurse is trained, and then also every police officer is also trained. Uh, the nurses have emergency backpacks where they keep those in. Just one of the things that we have done, we have provided CPR classes for coaches and students. Uh, students in health science class, I was able to go and do some teaching with them. CPR and stop the bleed training to students in auto tech. One thing I didn't mention uh, kind of goes along with CPRs. We did get all new AEDs for the district and we were able to purchase a trainer AED, which I love that because it's actually the AED they can put on the mannequins. It tells them push harder, push faster. It's um, to me, that's what training is all about. So I'm really glad that we were able to purchase that trainer. Uh, did some bloodborne pathogen training. We had make sure flu shots were available. Uh, just last week, we did stop the bleed training offered for 7th through 12th graders, and that fulfills our traumatic injury response protocol. Uh, I had the nurse from the CMS in the high school, they were with, there with me, and also Dr. Kingman, and he brought a medical student with him. And we set up during lunchtime. We had our mannequins out. The teachers showed a four-minute preview, a four-minute video. Um, about what is, why is it important, and then we were there at lunchtime. It was interesting to see the kids come up and practice, and we talked about, like, if you don't have a tourniquet, what do you use? So it was really good life lessons, hands-on, of how you could save somebody's life. So I was really glad we were doing that. Our school nurses are also preceptor for nursing students from the Navarro College, the LVN and the RN program. Uh, my nurses, they respond to a lot of emergencies on campus. School nursing has definitely changed in my years of school nursing. So we have purchased new emergency backpacks. I, I call them our Ghostbuster backpacks. If you've ever seen Nurse Ward or Nurse Reagan with one, it looks like that. But every nurse now has one because now they're required to carry Narcan. They're required to carry Stop the Bleed. I want them to have their assessment tools with them. I need them to have their pulse socks, their blood pressure cuff, their pin light all that right there at their fingertips. Normally the small duffel bags, we we're pulling everything out. So now we do have better emergency backpacks for each nurse. Uh, we have provided medical care, assessment, education, emergency preparedness, and life talks with staff and students. Uh, during the Day of Champion, I was able to be on the field with our head athletic trainers, and we had the ambulance on campus, I mean, on the football field, just to be ready. I love being on that campus, being on the field for those days. It was a great day. We were there to handle any kind of minor to major medical um, emergency. 
Um, and then just a couple things that I'm doing to represent CISD. Um, as I go to the Skyward User Conference, I'm presenting for that, just to let y'all know. And then also, in, in my professional organizations, I'm representing CISD as our secretary. Uh, just to let you know how I'm representing CISD out in my professional organizations. And then as of May 3rd, the nurses of CSD have had a total of 40,986 visits to their clinic. They are very busy. So uh, just, like, just kind of give y'all give an update. Um, so that's my SHAC report. Any questions? Yeah, I have a question, yes. Carla. Um, how often do you and your nurses check the expiration dates, of especially the Narcan and the Stop Bleed, because they have a short expiration life? Yes. So for right now, we just ordered new Stop the Bleed kits because of the clotting factors. They do expire this year. So that is something that we have checked on. Um, the Narcan, I think it expires this year also. Um, talking with um, our health department, they'll be able to get us more. Or there's also some websites. And do, you, do you all have a, a process where you all check it every month? Do you all just we check it? our AEDs every month. And so in that is our Stop the Bleed kits. So uh, whenever we purchase the Stop the Bleed kits, all the dates were the same and the clotting and all that, so I am aware of what the, what the expiration date is. And the Narcan? The Narcan, I'll have to check on that. I don't, I don't think we do a monthly assessment on that. That would be something that I would suggest. Yes, I can add that to our monthly checklist, yes. Because we do monthly checklists every month. They send them to me by the 5th of every month, and we can definitely add that, yes. Thank you. Yes, sir. I have a question about the videos. Yes. So I know you um, had created some. Yes, we did. Was that for just for the elementary or, like, or did we create some for the intermediate school too? So the videos we did were for the fourth graders. Yeah. Um, that's where we kept it very basic, very simple. Right. Um, and then we did one for the fifth grade. We do Procter and Gamble. That was already a pre-made video. The one that we made was a to meet a teak that was not being met, and that was on fetal development. And that's when we used the Hope Center models to talk about fetal development. So those were the videos that we made. Um, for eighth grade, all of the videos we purchased through Marsh Media. The other videos are shown for, for fourth grade, fifth grade, and sixth grade. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Yes. Any other questions? Carla, do we need to approve this for the uh, educational tools for truck yes. Tucker's Law? So we can put this in consent agenda for next week because it's an information item tonight. Okay. Yes, according to Tucker's Law, it does have to be approved by y'all. Any other questions? All right, thank you. Okay. Thank you for coming. We are now going to move into closed session. Uh, we'll adjourn into closed session as permitted by Texas Government Code Section 551.01. Thank you. <laughs>